Matter of fact, I just hit the record button. Okay, it's 345. We'll get started. Today, we're talking about building a PLN. And we'll talk about what exactly that means. And what spurred this is, is the 12-day challenge that, that came about. Uh, it was created by Mickey and uh, I think Josh was in there. So let's talk about who our co-hosts are today. I'm Corey Dahl and I work at ESU 8. And with me is Mickey. Yep, I'm Mueller. Mickey Mueller. I'm Mickey Mueller. I'm the Educational Technology Facilitator for Norfolk Public Schools. And Otis. Otis Pierce is from ESU 7. And we have Laura Kroll from Exeter Milligan. And Josh Allen from Lewis Central. And we're going to be just chiming in today as we go. Because everybody here that's co-hosting co has plenty to say about this topic of building a PLN. Let's get started. What is a PLN? I've highlighted those letters there is a personal learning network and we'll spend the next several minutes just talking about what that means to us and we'll just take turns as we go. Um, I've really embraced the personal learning network um, once Twitter really got started and when I started it. So it means more and more as we've uh, moved along throughout the years and I think each person will speak to that as well. Okay, so why would you build a PLN? Let's start here. Let's have Josh. There's Josh. I'll drag a picture of him in there. And let's just have him share just a, a couple things about why you would do such a thing. Did we lose Josh? That's all right. We'll come back to Josh. Mickey Mueller, let's go over to you. Tell me what it's meant to you to start building a PLN and how it's affected your career and your professional life. Well, um, I, I am actually on Twitter because of Corey Dahl. Um, and uh, he tried to convince me for a long time that that was something that I should do. And um, finally, I lost a bet and uh, had to join Twitter. And it has been the best thing that I have ever done professionally. Um, I, I think we all get to a point in our careers where um, you love what you're doing, but you're just not finding uh, a challenge anymore, or you just you, you just need a little something. And Twitter was that little something for me. I thought I was connected, and I thought I knew what was going on in the world of educational technology, and I had no idea what I was missing out on. Um, and so Twitter has really just given me new life as a professional, um, as an educator. Uh, I can't believe um, all the connections that I've made as a result of just uh, getting on that one social network. And, and there's other, you know, social networks out there. Google Plus is another great option, but Twitter for me has been has been um, the biggest factor in building a personal learning network. Right. Very good. Talk about um, just sharing ideas. Uh, let's, let's see, I see Josh is back in. Josh, talk about sharing ideas and using Twitter and a PLN. Well, my apologies. Um, you know, sharing ideas, uh, it's, it's a great place, Twitter is, for throwing your ideas out there, um, using a hashtag to uh, find other like-minded people that um, can give you feedback on it, um, can provide you um, guidance. You can learn from their experiences. Um, just today, we had a school district uh, visit uh, Lewis Central here. Um, to learn about our one-to-one -one program with Chromebooks. And all of that um, happened because of a, um, you know, I had shared online about some of the things that we were doing and, and they wanted to come learn from that. Um, and, you know, I put out what, what we're struggling with and what we're, we're, we are learning. 
and uh, people see that, and uh, we can begin sharing ideas uh, that way. So um, there's really, you know, a hashtag or um, a, a group out there for whatever it is that you're interested in, being it educational or not. Um, so it, it's just a matter of, of finding the right area. Wonderful. Okay, next we have Otis. Otis is close by. Otis, how you use Twitter and how PLN has affected your professional career as well. Just expand on something Josh or Mickey has said. Or you know, I think it's expanded my professional circle just being able to communicate with like-minded people. Uh, not only uh, in Nebraska and, and in, in my service unit and within the ESUs in Nebraska, but across state lines and across the world. Uh, you know, seeing what's happening and learning what's happening from people in Australia or England or New Zealand or Canada or Mexico or, or wherever it may be um, helps to expand what we know um, and it helps. You know, 140 characters is, is short, short to get an idea out there. Uh, but then when you attend conferences or things and actually get to meet up with those people and, um, and see those rock stars and get to actually collaborate and things come about um, because of those collaborations that you started on Twitter where you can connect your classroom, uh, your school, your ESU uh, with places around the wor world and learn from others. Uh, I think that is, that is great to not only build your professional circle, uh, but to show the kids as well what is out there for them. That's very true. Um, I, I find myself checking into Twitter often. Um, I've learned to do certain things like follow hashtags and follow certain people to get ideas. But I really use my PLN for things just like today. I put it out there and, and was able to connect with several people to help with this uh, webinar today, but I also use it uh, occasionally when I have questions. I put that out there. I also use it to share things that I find that I think are interesting. Okay, any further comments? I put several words on here. I do use it for inspiration. I put that word up there because I will see posts or quotes that, that people find inspiring. And I'll keep those and share those. Definitely use it to connect, share. And when you think about staying current, if you're on Twitter and following people, you are following a lot of the most current people, and they're sharing new ideas. And I definitely use it for encouragement, without a doubt. OK, let's move on. So step one in creating a PLN is to join Twitter, which brings us to this idea. And I'm going to have Mickey and also uh, Josh, if he's still available. I'm going to have them talk about how this idea came about. Well, I'll go ahead and start. Um, actually, this was something I did with my staff last year at this time. I had just done a Twitter 101 session. I'd gotten some people signed up for Twitter. And in my experience, the hardest thing for a new Twitter person to do is actually tweet. They, are, they don't know what to tweet about. They have no idea what they should say. And so I came up with this challenge um, to give them something to tweet about, to help them get over the, the hurdle uh, about, about tweeting. And um, so in November, Josh and several other people and I were together um, talking about ways that um, we could uh, involve our staff in social media. Um, Josh, are you still there? Do you want to pick it up from there? I, I am still here. Um, in my new district, um, I saw the opportunity. I, this is the first time they've had a tech integration person at all. And while there's some pockets of teachers using social media, it hasn't really been a concerted effort. Um, so it's, but I knew that teachers would really be interested in it. 
So during our little get together, you know, I just threw out the question. I don't even know really where to begin to teach these uh, educators how to use different pieces of social media. And so as we were discussing, you know, Mickey mentioned that she had done this 12 days of Twitter, and and uh, we we kind of um, kicked around the idea a little bit and. Uh, you know, at one point we had thought, let's do 12 days of social media, and we're going to cover all these. We're going to cover Pinterest and Google Plus and Facebook, and you know that went on for about five minutes, and then you know we got smarter and thought that's probably a little too much, so we dialed it back a little bit and borrowed from from Mickey's, and uh, uh, we uh, divided and conquered. Um, Patty Wolf and Angie Fadon at Concordia. Patty's at Cozad. Um, Chris Erickson from York, um, and I don't remember who all else, uh, Mickey and I, uh, all created uh, different uh, pictures, the ones that you see every day, and one of us will tweet it out um, on that hashtag with different challenges. And um, So that's kind of how it came to be. You know, all of us are, were together in that spot just because of Twitter. Um, that's how we all kind of got to know each other, and uh, so it's kind of given back a little bit. Right. So I, I saw, I heard the idea, and I thought, this is, this is a great way to get started. So I think we need to go to Mickey's uh, Live Finder, and I'll do that here momentarily. Okay, you should be able to see her Live Finder. And now, Mickey, uh, if you guide us through this, uh, sort of what we're seeing left to right, and how they can find out what the challenges are, even though it started yesterday, we can easily yeah, catch up. Um, yep, you can still catch up. We still want people to participate. And so what we did was we put together this live binder to kind of hold everything. And so the first tab just explains what the challenge is. And on the second tab, we put things, if you were brand new to Twitter, how would you get started? Who do you follow? How does Twitter work? So we've got some tips there for you. So if you've never used Twitter at all, go to signing up for Twitter on that tab, and it will take you through the steps that you need to go through to create a Twitter account. And then we've just given you some other helpful things there. Um, you know, how does Twitter work if you're brand, brand new to Twitter, if you don't understand how that works. And then what we've got in the binder is um, I've got the, the 12 days Twitter, the hashtag that we're using. That is a live feed. Um, for people who are tweeting with that hashtag. So you can kind of scroll through and see what everybody has been tweeting. Um, for it's not, it's not a full list of people, but um, you know, that's a quite, a, you know, quite a few of the most recent tweets are listed there. So you can kind of see what other people have been sharing. And on the other tabs are just the topics for the day. So yesterday we did an introduction. And if you didn't start yesterday, it's OK. We had people do their tweet for day one and day two today. So whenever you want to jump in, just go ahead and jump in. So each tab lists the topic for the day. So today was a really awesome day because it was share your favorite website. And I tell you what, I uh, that was that. that was my link, by the way. Just just saying, that was my picture. That was my, my link. Just throwing that out there. Yes. Josh created this this image for the binder, um, but if I, I could have just sat and watched the 12 days of Twitter feed all day long because so many people were sharing so many good things. So you could go to this binder and um, access what the challenges challenges are coming up. As you're getting started, why I love this challenge is you may not know really what to do to get started. So these are just simple tasks to do. And then it kind of, you kind of dip your toe into Twitter. And, it, and it, to me, it kind of helps you start becoming that connected educator, which I think is, is important to everybody. You know, it's not only connected within your building and your town, but you get to connect with people from uh, around the country and around the world, as I said earlier, uh, and, and sharing that wealth of information that is out there from others. Yeah, and Otis bring us up a good point. You know, this was a group of educators sitting around, most of us from Nebraska, uh, Josh working in Iowa, and we thought, let's do this and let's see what happens. Well, um, I've gone through and just I've, as I've been watching, you know, throughout the last two days, um, I have counted, we have had 
participants from just about every state. Tennessee, Texas, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Missouri, Kansas, Georgia, Illinois, Maryland, Iowa, Nebraska. And we've even had some international participation. Um, we've had somebody from Canada and just this afternoon somebody from Morocco joined our challenge. So it truly is an international Twitter challenge. And what's neat about that, and you miss you uh, uh, talking about all the states who have participated, is you go from being isolated perhaps in a small town in Nebraska and not having many people that are in your area perhaps and you can immediately expand your circle. Well, and that's another I, I would say I to, to Go ahead, Josh. I was just going to say, you know, to, to your point about you don't didn't have to start yesterday. Um, I have a meeting with the teacher at 12:30 tomorrow to get her Twitter account set up, and then we'll be starting from day one, and we'll just do her first three tweets um, are, are going to be whatever that is. So um, it's definitely not too late to get started. Uh, you can you know pick it up at any time. Yeah, and Nate, Bal Nate Balcom at Grand Island actually had a little Twitter station set up in his library and had people get, the, he helped people set up their Twitter accounts and their first tweet was their 12 days of Twitter tweet. So, um, yeah, mm. you can jump in at any time. That's a great That's idea. A cool idea. And I can't wait to see how this develops even to the future and the next year to, to continue this 12 days of Twitter. I think I need a carol. So perhaps you can't play it before Thanksgiving, though. That's just what I was going to say. It can't be done before Thanksgiving. Right. Only <laughs> Hashtag respect the pilgrims. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, and, and not only you know we hope a song comes out of this, but I also hope that people are following people that are tweeting. I mean, I know I have followed tons of new people, and I have had tons of new followers since this has started. So tweet to the hashtag but also follow the people who are tweeting, the people that you, you know, aren't from Nebraska or aren't from Iowa, the people from Morocco and whoever and wherever else they're tweeting from. Follow some new people too. Nikki, while we're here and we may have some new users listening to this now, as well as since we're recording it uh, a day or so later or in the future, talk about the hashtag and, and what, the, how, what role they play. Yeah, um, I like to use uh, my good friend Craig Badura's analogy. A hashtag is like a TV channel. And uh, so when you use a hashtag in a tweet, people who are following that uh, hashtag will see that tweet. So it's just like if you wanted to watch sports, you would turn on ESPN. Well, if you want to participate in the 12 Days Twitter, you need to use our hashtag. And um, so if you're not on Twitter and you want to kind of check things out, if you go to twitter.com slash search, and put in the hashtag 12 days Twitter, you will see all of the tweets that have been sent to that particular hashtag. It just kind of gets you an idea or a flavor for what's going on. And you can do that with any hashtag that you might want to follow or that you might want to check out. So Corey here has gone to twelve or to twitter.com slash search and he's putting in the hashtag 12 days Twitter. And um, we're gonna pull up and see, um, look at that, there's my good friend Craig Badura right at the top. Um, <laughs> and these are different It was funny. As, as you mentioned him, he tweeted that out. It was pretty funny. We had that <laughs> planned. <You've> had <laughs> various people who have used the 12 days Twitter. That's included in each tweet. So I don't have to belong to Twitter to so just search it and follow this. No, you don't. You can just go. You can go here, or it, remember, in the live binder, I do have a tab that has the 12 days Twitter feed um, in it. So you can go to that tab and see what people have been tweeting. So yeah, you don't have to be involved with Twitter, but it sure makes it more fun. And I would think and that's one of the was... things that I've said. Go ahead, Corey. No, I was going to say that's one thing that I sent out to my staff too. Is you know, this is what is going on. If, if nothing else, go and, and especially today, go see what people are sharing. You know, there's some great websites being shared. Um, so e even if you're not on Twitter and you're not interested, at least go look and, and see the resources that are there. Because I think once you see what's there, I think you do kind of see the power of, you know, why Twitter is uh, so popular among educators. 
Exactly. Well, and, and today's uh, challenge was tweet your favorite website. Well, if you're like me, I don't just have one favorite website. So I just periodically tweeted a website throughout the day. Um, so, and tomorrow will be another great option for that. Uh, tomorrow is tweet your favorite app or extension. So again, I will probably just share all day long different apps and extensions that I use. So don't feel limited. You don't have to just tweet once. You can tweet more than once for each day. Is there anything else that we have to add? Any closing comments by our, oh, by our expert? Okay, two slides to if you want to lurk, uh, but don't just lurk. Some of the best part of Twitter is being able to share. Uh, but it's okay to just sit and watch for a little bit, like tonight with Nebraska Ed Chat. It's okay to sit and watch it for a little bit, but participating is key as well. I have a question. Uh, Troy, I have enabled your microphone. Do you want to add something to this? We'll see if he can't get his microphone going. A surprise mystery guest. That's always fun. Right. He, we had actually raised his hand. So we'll see if he has something to add. And if not, I would just encourage, if you're a Twitter user, and you have people around you who maybe don't get it, get them involved with this and just do these simple tasks over the next few days and then we'll Hello? see how that goes. Yes, Troy. Hi guys, uh, great webinar. Um, changing, or getting my information to my staff. Best way, I'm, Mickey's got the live binder that we can look through. They can search 12 days of Twitter. Tweet deck. What's you know? What's the best way to monitor the twelve days of Twitter challenge? I like I like Tweet Deck. Is that something I should be talking to my staff about, especially the new ones? Well, let's let's go around. Otis, what is your favorite uh, app, or how would you monitor the twelve days of Twitter? Uh, I use Tweet Deck. Uh, you know, on the uh, computer. Um, I actually have the app downloaded, uh, but it is web based. Uh, which is nice. Uh, anybody new to Twitter can go ahead and just log in uh, with their Twitter handle now. Um, if okay. I'm on the iPad, uh, there is no tweet deck on the iPad, unfortunately. Uh, so on the iPad, I use Hootsuite uh, for that. Uh, but I am I am known as a tweetaholic. Uh, we won't say how many columns I have on my tweet deck. Uh, just because I have a lot, uh, but it, it makes it easier to follow, especially if you're at like a conference or something, um, and then sometimes depending on the conference, uh, for example, ISTE, uh, I, ha I can't even follow it on TweetDeck, it just flies by so fast uh, right. with so much information being shared, but I like to use TweetDeck personally, um, and then on my phone, I'll, I'll just use the Twitter app, and if it's something that I want to look at a little bit more, I'll make sure I favorite it, and then when I get back to my tweet deck, I'm able to go and take a peek at it. Josh, what what is your favorite Twitter app? Well, I am in the minority. Um, I am not a tweet deck fan for new users. I think it's too overwhelming. Um, I I use tweet deck. I did set up a column for 12 days of Twitter. I am much more apt to tell people to go to search.twitter.com if they want to follow a hashtag. Or if they are using a, a you know a software or an app, you know to use the search feature within those apps. Um, I I've long been in the minority. Um, I know that, that that's recommended by a lot of people. Um, I feel it's too overwhelming, so I always have them just search for the app and and you know that you can save it if you want or go back to that link. Um, but but for new users, that's that's my recommendation. I want to expand on what. Uh Otis was saying, Otis uses the Chrome app, uh, TweetDeck found in the Chrome uh, browser, whereas I just use the TweetDeck uh, application itself. Okay, Mickey, what do you use? Are you a TweetDeck user? Oh, yeah, I, I'm a TweetDeck user. 
and I disagree with Josh. I try and get my new Twitter users on TweetDeck as soon as I can. I know it's overwhelming, but if they're only using the Twitter app on their smartphones, they are missing so much because they're only seeing the tweets from the people that they follow. And with twelve, with a thing like 12 Days Twitter, like I said, there are tons of states, there are people from uh, other countries participating. So if you don't have that continuous scroll of that feed, you're really missing out. So I use TweetDeck, but um, in the live binder, I did, uh, I think, Tweet Chat. I think is what I did. There's some other clients, you know, websites that you can use, but like the, the Twitter search is just, you know, that's a great way to go too. But uh, to answer Troy's question, I also send an email to my staff every morning with the challenge of the day. I just take the picture from the live binder and send that to them as another reminder to so those people who are not on Twitter as much as I am, that at least gives them that reminder in their inbox that they need to go and you know do the challenge for the day. So I also email them as well as um, sending them, uh, tweeting it out. Wonderful. Hey, and I'm also great. helping new teachers and, and telling them about TweetDeck and, you know, and, and putting the columns in. I say start with one hashtag column. You, know, you don't need to put 20 uh, columns on your tweet deck right away. Um, Allegedly. With, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's probably low right now. Uh, right. But, uh, you know, start with just one column, and then you can always work your way up. And if, and if it's something, a hashtag or a person that you uh, followed, and they're not putting out what you think they should be or you're not getting anything from them, Stop following that person or stop following that hashtag. Uh, you know, it's it's choice. Follow what uh, is best for you. you bet. Hey, Craig Badura has joined us, has raised his hand. And I know. Him no. Let's give him a <laughs> yes, it's just like a call in show. I love this. Yeah, on the line, we have Craig Badura. <laughs> yeah, I've got some garden tools I need to sell. I'm sorry, that's the wrong station. <laughs> Craig, welcome to the where program. We, uh, is this where we talk about uh, renovating an old house? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Vila is on the line. Bob, what are you working on now? Can you hear me or not? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, we can. I, I was just lurking. That's all I'm doing. I'm out. Later. <laughs> You scared me. I'm gone. Corey. All right. <laughs> I'm actually working on a bathroom right now, uh, okay. waiting for the plumber. Uh, what else would you like to know? Uh, tile's done. 100 year old bathroom is ready. Oh, suddenly we've lost connection with Mr. Badura. <laughs> so uh, wait, I thank my guest panel today <laughs> Mickey Mueller, Otis Pierce, Josh Allen, and Laura Kroll. I was walking. I was watching on Twitter, and she was having some technical difficulties. As did Mr. Badura there. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Share with your friends the 12-day challenge, and thank you to the group who helped create it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>